What's up, witches? Welcome back to my channel. It's Megan. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Today, I want to take you through a process of making your own loose incense from plants that you have all around you. So the particular plant that I'm going to be using today is juniper, and I actually harvested this juniper from plants or from trees that were in my yard. Juniper grows all over here in Central Oregon, so it was something really easy that I could get my hands on. I don't remember the exact day that I harvested this juniper, but it's been a while. The particular juniper that I have here has already been dried, and I did this by putting it into the oven on the lowest possible temperature and letting it bake essentially for about one to two hours. If you have a dehydrator, you can use a dehydrator. Um, you can also just hang it to dry, but that is a longer process. I didn't have anywhere to hang the juniper to dry, so I just chose to use it in the oven. After they were dry, I just store them until I was ready to use them. So what we're going to do, as you can see me doing here, is I added the juniper leaves to my pestle and mortar and just grind it up. Um, there were some stems and some juniper berries that were in this mixture, but those were a little, not a little, those were a lot more difficult for me to crush in my pestle and mortar, so I actually ended up taking the um, berries out of the mixture and only used the dried leaves. Making this incense is actually a fairly simple process. You just dry out your plant, grind it in your pestle and mortar or food processor or however you decide to do it, and then it's good to go. This is also the first time that I'm actually making incense like this, so yeah, <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun. While we're grinding here, I just want to give you a little bit of information about the plant that I'm using. So this is Western Juniper, and this kind of juniper is found everywhere here in Central Oregon. Um, if you're going to use wild plants like this, I definitely recommend asking permission from the plant before you take it, which I know if that's not something that you're used to doing, it can seem a little strange, but this is out of respect for the spirit and the energy of the plant itself. I am an animist, so I do believe that everything has a spirit, everything has its own soul energy. And asking permission before taking a part of a plant, especially a plant that is still living, is the respectful thing to do. So I asked the plant for permission to take some of its stems and leaves, the plant obliged, and then you always want to make sure that you give an offering in return. And the offering you want to give is something that the plant can use, you know. So I gave the juniper tree that I took this from plenty of nice, fresh, clean water. As far as spiritual and magical uses go, there are several texts and resources that show historical uses for juniper. In the story Red Riding Hood, the mother laid juniper down in front of the house in the shape of a cross to protect the children that were inside from the devils that were outside. In several texts, the smoke of juniper is said to have purification properties, much like most witches consider sage to have. It was used to purify livestock as well as ward off disease. Paul Kendall of Trees for Life, a Scottish charity, writes that practical uses of juniper's wood are few, and it was most commonly used to burn, though not for its heat, rather its smoke. Though burning juniper wood gives off only minimal visible smoke, this smoke is highly aromatic and in ancient times it was used for the ritual purification of temples. 
The smoke was said to aid clairvoyance and continue to be burned for purification and to stimulate contact with the other world at the Autumn Samhain Fire Festival at the beginning of the Celtic year. In Central Europe, juniper smoke played a part in the springtime cleansing and casting out of witchcraft. Juniper was also burned during outbreaks of the plague, and in Scotland, the disease could be dispelled by fumigating the house with juniper smoke while its occupants were inside, after which the house was aired and the occupants were revived with whiskey. I've always loved the smell of juniper, and it's been burned for purification purposes and many other reasons. This incense that I'm making will be used as an offering some days and on others just because I enjoy the smell. The smell is not as strong as your cone or stick incense, but that's perfectly fine with me. Once you have the incense ground down as fine as you can get it, you can either burn it on a charcoal disc or put it in an oil diffuser like the one I have here. If you do it this way, please do not use water as your base inside the little tray. The water will evaporate and it will leave the incense to burn too hot and possibly crack your diffuser. You want to use some form of oil as a base, and here I just used a simple olive oil that I got from the grocery store, but you could use any kind of liquid oil you have on hand. You simply pour the oil in the pan, light the tea light candle, and sprinkle the top of the oil with your new incense. I hope this was helpful to you and maybe inspired you to get out into your yard and see what you have available to you. Maybe you can make incense of your own from some plants or trees or herbs that are in your yard. I will leave a link in the description below to this app that I found called Seek and it's really helpful for identifying different plants in your area. Um, this video is not sponsored by them, I just really enjoy this app. So let me know if you make your own incense and I'd love to know your process and the different things that you have used. As always, thank you to my patrons on Patreon, and I will see you in my next video.